Hi, my name is Kathy Windrum. Sean is my husband. We have been married for a lot of years, almost 28. We have two awesome grown university attending daughters, Caitlin and Victoria. Sean and I met, dated, got engaged, and married all within a space of 15 months. Clearly, he knew a good thing when he saw it. I have given my testimony a lot of reflection and time because I honestly couldn't tell you a time that I wasn't a Christian or a believer, a follower of Christ. Even though I grew up in a family of, a, of irregular attendance, a Christmas and Easter church-going family, and of the four kids, I am the only one walking in faith. Life growing up was trying, tumultuous, and oftentimes dangerous. In high school, I attended St. Angela's Academy in Prelate. It's a private school for girls run by the Roman Catholic Ursuline Religious Order of Nuns, which is 11 kilometers east of Leader. This is where I first witnessed the true love of Christ and personal faith-filled sacrifice. The sisters as a whole probably had the deepest impact on my life and truly a pivotal point in my own walk or jog with Christ. The love for their girls is still strong and devoted to this day. Many of the sisters are now quite elderly or have passed away. Being in residence at school was one of the first times I can remember going to sleep and waking up feeling 100% safe. At 15, this was a very odd feeling. The sisters taught me how to come out of my shell. I was so shy that it was socially disabling me. I've always felt that my earlier in life situation helped me develop a stronger relationship and dependency on God's presence. As well, my childhood solidified for me the honest and sometimes horrible realization and understanding that bad things happen to good people every day. I don't get it, but also that God does answer my prayers every day. Like every child, whether you're a child of mine or a child of God, the answer may be yes, then sometimes, to my great dismay, it's a solid no. But regardless of the outcome of his answer, my prayers were still answered. I have been reading a book by Australian author and evangelist Christine Kane called Don't Look Back, where she explains that we are introduced to 137 women in the Bible. But Jesus tells us in Luke 17, 32, to remember only one. Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife professed her faith in the Lord, but she just couldn't trust the future, nor was she able to put her entire faith in the future and safety of what the Lord promised. She was so consumed with the past and what she was leaving behind that the blessings of the future were disregarded. Before I was able to put all of my faith and complete trust in Christ and his sacrifice for me, it was easy for me to look at my past and get mired in that muck and blame my bad behavior on the historical bad behavior my pre of my predecessors. I knew I had to stop the cycle of dysfunction and the normalization of violence. Every day on my phone, it reminds me to do my reading and to do and to be a nicer, more loving, patient wife and mother. I knew I had to surrender and leave my past where it belonged behind me. I couldn't be a good wife, mother, daughter, and friend if I was reliving my past. I'm here to say that faith was easy, but the surrender is hard. I've been told that I'm a strong-willed person although you can't believe everything you hear. I'm a shy introvert, and the prospect of surrender was intimidating. And as trite as this may sound, every single time that I surrender my feelings and situations and hand them over to the Lord to handle, they always seem to work out. I do it at work all the time. I sit quietly in my office, palms out on my keyboard. Emails continue, continuing to arrive, Teams messages beeping at me, and I just hand it over to God. Honestly, I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel. I don't know why I keep trying to do this on my own. A calmness covers my heart and my brain, and I can feel the Holy Spirit working, working around me. I surrendered my past, the family life, and the tragedy that it was. The hurt, the constant pain, toxicity, and stress are all in God's hands now. I once sat in the St. Paul's I 
I once sat in a St. Paul's Hospital emergency room cubicle, a very scary place in the middle of the night. With our youngest daughter, who at just barely 17 was very sick before she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I cried, I pleaded, I was angry, I questioned. Finally, in the middle of the night, I surrendered my feelings, my anxiety. From within the emergency room cubicle, with all of the horrible sounds and noises, I started to give thanks for her and for his gift of our girls to us, for her life to be spared, and I celebrated her diagnosis, her diagnosis instead. I chose to put my faith in the future and knowing that God is good and he will provide. I have lots of favorite verses and spots in the Bible that really speak to me, but a couple of easy-to-remember ones that I use daily as a reset are Luke 17, 32, Remember Lot's Wife, and Joshua 24, 15, just the last sentence, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Being baptized is my very public, witnessed, recorded, and watch declaration, the confession of my faith and my humble desire for baptism, and to walk through life here on earth with Jesus.